real quick. I just want to give an update. Uh, we are nearly finished with 10 chapters of my latest book, Millennial Prophets Arise. 10 chapters. And uh, we're working on editing these 10 chapters right now. Just I inputted some extra stories and, you know, we're just moving some things around. So very exciting. Very excited about this book, Millennial Prophets Arise. I sense that, uh, you know, in our generation, we need sound biblical doctrine or teaching on the prophetic because there's a lot of people trying to throw shade on prophets and the prophetic and these so-called proclaimed prophets or profakes, you know, are nothing but fakes. They're, you know, they're not walking in the true oil, the true office grace of the prophetic. So uh, millennial prophets arise, very excited, uh, finished 10 chapters and we're working on the editing of that. <laughs> But I'm going to add two more chapters to that book. Uh, and so I'm really excited about that. And you know what? Keep this in prayer. This is a secret between me and you. All right. Are you ready? You see, you share secrets with those who you love. So because I love you, I'm going to share the secret with you. So please don't tell nobody. Okay. But uh, Chosen is already interested in this new book. You already know Chosen Baker Publishing. Uh... I'm already signed with them and my book with them, Supernatural Power of Honor, will be released next year, June 2024. But they are already interested in this second book, in this, which is a miracle. So millennial prophets arise. I know God is on the millennials and the Gen Zs, and he's on this generation, the Lord's generation. Amen. Well, praise God. And once again, Shabbat Shalom, friends. Wow, wow, wow. Lots going on. Isn't it exciting? Isn't it fun? And of course, as I prophesied and as I began to talk about, we are in the last month up to Rosh Hashanah. And the Lord said this one month will be a month of miracles and mysteries unveiled and manifested. So it's going to be a month of mysteries, miracles manifested. Hey, real quick. Um, this coming Monday, we have a webinar, Effective Supernatural Spiritual Warfare. Effective, uh, effective spiritual warfare. And uh, that's going to be this Monday. It's a free live Zoom webinar. So we love to see all the beautiful faces from around the world. Uh, it is a Zoom, so you have to register on our website. But I want to teach you how to have effective spiritual warfare. Alana, if you could please post that so I could pin it. But I want to teach you how to have effective spiritual warfare. So that is this Monday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard effective spiritual warfare please come and join i believe we need to be geared up guarded up we need to be gloried up we need to be me up scotty in the spirit more than ever before so uh monday is going to be very exciting amen and then next week i'm going to be in pennsylvania all right i'll be in lebanon pennsylvania for four days next week wednesday thursday friday saturday so if you're in the east coast Please come and join me. All right. Uh, that is my East Coast hub. I would love to see you if you are out there in the East Coast or Pennsylvania area. It's week four over there for the revival. It's going to be very, very powerful. So jump in the river, get in the glory, come and see me in Pennsylvania, excuse me, and come jump in the river glory. And I can't wait to see you. Hallelujah. Um, as well. I know there's always so much going on in our ministry as well. September 10th, September 10th, we are having Mama Pastor Suzanne Hinn. She's the wife of Pastor Benny Hinn. She's my spiritual mom. And Mama Pastor Suzanne Hinn we, we will be with us here in Southern California. Open Heaven's World. Praise God. So Open Heaven's World. And uh, that's going to be Sunday, September 10th. So that's going to be a glory impartation. And we would love for you to come and join and be a part. Thanks, Alana, for not, uh, for not pasting, posting what I asked you to do. Thanks so much. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be September 10th. Oh, you're a little too late, Sissa. It's going to be September 10th. And um, it's going to be awesome. Amen. Well, friends, lift up your hands. God, I thank you for every single person that is connected to this broadcast. 
that is tapping into the glory realm. God, I ask you that the fire and the power of God will show up manifest. And I thank you on the Shabbat, on this broadcast, that you would release breakthrough, miracle signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people say, amen, amen, and amen. Well, praise God, friends. Today, I want to talk about something a little more serious and a little more heavy. But I do believe judgment is here and judgment is coming. I do believe that judgment is taking place in America and what we're seeing uh, with these evil acts of sin, with transgenderism and these attacks of viruses, right? You see in Deuteronomy 28, you see that there are certain curses that will remain or be in the land when there is sin in the land. Sin, as you see with Achan's camp, Achan stole something and he disobeyed the Lord and therefore there was sin in the camp because of one man. But who here knows? As sin and death entered creation through one man, so therefore righteousness and redemption also enters creation through one man. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. So here we are. Uh, the effects of sin have opened up the door for curses to remain. And in Deuteronomy 28, we see that there are curses such as sickness, death, poverty, your animals, your crops being infirmed, your, your agriculture uh, dying, famine in the land. So there are certain curses that you open up the door to when you have sin, active sin, willing, omitted, committed sin in your life, right? And so that is 100% biblical, right? And again, a lot of people use cheap, sleazy, sloppy grace, thinking that Jesus is going to cover it all. And listen, he did. But repentance means that there's change. Repentance means that there is a fear of God. And what does fear of God mean? It means to hate evil and to love good. It means to hate all that God hates. I hate hurting his heart. It hurts me to hurt the heart of God. And I feel, I feel the Lord right now. It hurts me. It grieves me for the spirit of God to be grieved. It grieves me. And um, so true repentance brings change and there's fruit. And that's why the apostle says in the epistles that bear fruit with repentance. There must be godly sorrow and godly fruit, godly change that comes with repentance. Praise God. Uh, so I believe the fear of the Lord is coming back to the church. And uh, even, uh, I believe I, I talked about this a number of weeks ago, but Papa Prophet Paul Cain, he was a spiritual papa to me. Uh, Paul Cain was one of the Kansas City prophets. And um, Paul Cain had a prolific, incredible word of knowledge, prophetic gift. And, and he had the ability to move in healing miracles like William Branham. Uh, and Papa Paul Kim was also a statesman where he prophesied to many government officials and high level government workers, right? So Papa Paul, before he died, he had a, an encounter with God and he saw the spirit of the fear of the Lord manifest and the spirit of the fear of God came in the room and the Lord began speaking to him saying that in the end times, the spirit of the fear of the Lord will come very strong. Now, uh, I wrote a whole chapter on the fear of the Lord in my new book, Millennial Prophets Arise. And even as I reviewed and wrote that chapter, I mean, the, the fear, the presence of the Lord uh, came all around me. And of course, I ministered on that subject uh, a few weeks ago. But the spirit of the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so I believe the fear of God is returning back to the church. And the fear of the Lord is returning back to America. The fear of God. And the fear of the Lord doesn't necessarily mean that you should be afraid of God, that you're wanting to distance yourself. No, the fear of the Lord, it means intimacy with God. It's more than just respect and reverence. But the fear of the Lord means that you are terrified of Him. Absolutely. Because Jesus said, be afraid of the one who has authority to throw your soul in hell. All right. But the fear of the Lord, the Bible also quotes, is to hate evil, is to hate what he hates. 
and is to love what he loves. And that's the fear of the Lord. You fear from breaking his heart. Now, let me just give you a quick little example. Um, of course, many of you, I'm sure you love your parents. You will forever have an affinity, a love, a respect, a honor for your parents. If that's true, say amen and give us some hearts and likes. Would you ever want to see your mother, mother's heart broken? Would you ever want to disrespect your father? Uh-uh, not today. You better get the chancla. So in the same way, you fear from your parents being hurt. That's the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is promotion. The fear of the Lord is preservation. The fear of the Lord is protection. Remember that. Preservation, promotion, and protection. So the fear of the Lord. So I believe the fear of God is making a comeback where we do not want to be separate from him. We, we fear not being in the fullness of his presence. And that's even why the psalmist David, all right, in Psalm 51, after a sin with Bathsheba, he wrote, create in me a clean heart, O God, renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not take your presence away from me. Amen. It's a scary thing for the hand of God to lift off of your life. Just ask King Saul. Just ask Gehazi. It's a very scary thing for the hand, presence, favor of God to lift off of your life. So judgment is here and judgment is coming. But judgment begins first in the house of God. Now, before we go into scripture and before I continue on, I want you to give us some hearts and likes and share this on your wall, please. Help me build up the room and the algorithm and the atmosphere, praise God, because we are just getting into it today. Like I said, Shabbat Shalom. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. I'm happy to be back home. Uh, praise God in Los Angeles area, Southern California. And the Lord is good and the Lord is moving. Amen. So actually, let's go to the verse here. Let's go to the passage. All right. First and foremost, let's go to this passage here. Glory to God. First Peter. Amen. First Peter chapter four, verse seven. Hallelujah. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. First Peter chapter four, verse 17, excuse me. For it is time for judgment to begin in the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Once again, it is time. What time is it? It's time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? So here, Apostle Peter is stating, he's proclaiming that the fathers, the mothers, the priests, those who have, uh, th those who have the gospel, those who are stewards, managers of the grace, those who have been uh, partakers of the grace of God, we are first responsible. It's our responsibility, right? That's why all throughout the Old Testament, you see God confronting the priests and the elders and the prophets, even before he confronts and rebukes the common layman of the day throughout Israel. But judgment begins first in the house of God. And here, Apostle Peter is making a distinction. First, judgment comes to the house of God. Then, second, it comes to those who do not obey the gospel. So, unbelievers, Gentiles, what will be the outcome of those who do not obey the gospel of God? My goodness. So, there's different classes of judgment, different classifications of judgment. Are you hearing me? But you see, it begins first in the house of God. Why does it begin first in the house of God? Because it's our responsibility to not be hypocritical. It's our responsibility to walk in the fear of the Lord. It's our responsibility in relationship as a, with God as a bearer of light to the nations. It's our responsibility to walk circumspect and to walk the narrow road. We're not called to be loved by everybody. We're not called to be liked by everybody. We're not called to be praised by everybody. In fact, Jesus said, uh, beware if all people speak good of you. Beware, that is a sign that maybe you're beginning to be too tolerant 
rather than obedient. And so judgment begins first in the house of God. And I believe right now in the next month to two months, we are going to see. And guys, listen, you know me. I'm a times and seasons prophet, right? And I'm not a fear mongering prophet. I'm not a fear mongering prophetic voice. But there's times where I must speak up and speak out. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay, of course, you know, I love the prophetic. I love the glory. But in being aligned with the Cairo spirit of the Holy Ghost, I must speak on the time that we're in. And I believe in the next two months, we're going to see a lot of shaking in the church. If these lockdowns are for sure going to happen, if these lockdowns are for sure going to take place, then how many more churches are going to start shutting down? How many more religious leaders, pastors, ministers are going to start backing down again? How many people are going to back into a corner and be compliant or be a uh, non-vocal, be PC, politically correct, not JC, not Jesus correct? How many people are going to try to be everyone's favorite and walk this line of being liked by everybody? So I believe in the next two months, we are going to see a lot of shaking, especially in the church. But do not grow weary. This is actually a good thing. This is for your upgrade. This is for your breakthrough. Now, I don't want to sound suspicious or uh, intolerant uh, of my comment here, but I've said this many times. But I believe COVID-19 was the best thing that could have happened to the church in America. Why is that? Because it was an opportunity for us to exercise our faith and our authority in God, for us to believe in the Bible, for us to continue to be the church and shine the light, for us to show the world, you know what, the world is broken and is afraid, but we have the hope of the nations. It's the gospel. Come on, somebody, I'm about to get excited here. And from Corona Bologna to now, we've had great opportunities for the church to arise and for us to take our positions. It's time for you to take your position. It's time for you to man your post, woman your post. You need to get in line, soldier, praise God. Like the Bible says, a good soldier does not train or a good soldier does not get involved in civilian practices. A good soldier is on duty practicing discipline for the day of battle, for the army of the Lord. Amen. So it's time to buckle up them boots, oh soldier. But I believe in the next two months, we're going to start seeing more shakings again in the church. But again, this is not to bring shame or to expose. No, no, this is actually a cleansing. It's a purifying. It's an upgrade. It is a promotion. Because like I said in 2020, that was the opportunity for the new breed to arise. And I believe we're going to see a new breed. Strong, healthy, whole men, women of God, integral in Jesus' name. Who, who have nothing in common with the devil. Where every door is closed to the enemy. Amen. Shaka, I need you to pray in the Holy Ghost. Rebe se tarabata. Thank you, Lord. But I believe right now judgment is coming and judgment is here. And it goes in the house of God. Now, we think whatever's happening in the White House or in the government is judgment. It can be a sign of it. But it actually first begins in the church. So if all this is going on in the White House, how much more so will it happen in God's house? And I'm telling you, it's time to clean up. It's time to get ready. It's time to get ready, people, because Jesus is coming. Um, I was on the phone with Mama Pastor Suzanne Hinn about a, a week ago. Was it a week ago or even a few days ago? We've been talking. But uh, I was on the phone with Mama Pastor Sue, and she said, You know, Pastor Ben, I believe this fall is the fall that the Lord showed me many years ago. I believe the Lord gave her a vision in the 80s 
uh, in the 80s or so. But the Lord gave Mama Pastor Suzanne Hinn a vision that a great shaking was going to come in the fall. And Mama Pastor Suzanne shares in, the, in this vision that the Lord gave her many years ago is that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. But the ones who are in intimacy with the Lord, they will arise and ascend in Jesus' name. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. So she saw a great shaking. And in fact, even a great falling away. And on the phone, Mama Pastor Sue said she believes that this fall may be that great shaking. That great shaking that the Lord gave her the vision, gave her the word for. So there's something about this fall. There's something about this September, October, November, December. I'm telling you, friends, get ready for judgment to begin in the house of the Lord. All of God's people say amen. Now, let's go into this word here. I want to go into this word. I, I have some things that I want to share, but I felt led right now. Let's go into the definition and the interlinear or the lexicon about what that word judgment actually is in the Greek. So let's go here. Judgment in the Greek that is noted in this verse. It is krima. I want to say krima. All right. It is like the krima of the krapa. All right. We're going to learn some Greek here because I just felt led to do so. And what that word judgment or krima means, it means judgment. It means verdict sometimes and implying an adverse verdict. A condemnation, <clears throat> a case at law, or a lawsuit. Krima comes from the root word krino, which means to distinguish or to judge. To distinguish or to judge. Amen. And this is also described, number one, as a decree. Number two, as a decision or a judgment. Or number three... A matter that is judicially decided in a case of court. So I believe right now, many, many to kill a parson. The writing is on the wall. The finger of God has been lifted against many people. But it's time for us to repent. And you know what? What's going on with Trump? What's going on with everything in the world today? My goodness, the world is so sadly brainwashed. It is a nincompoop. Nincompoop. But uh, what's going on with President Trump and what's going on with the fear of COVID and the vaccination, et cetera, et cetera, this truly exposes what is in the hearts of people. Now, once again, let's go back to this word, crema. Trump was arrested, I believe, what, yesterday for the fourth time, indicted and arrested for the fourth time yesterday. All right. But this is a false judgment. This is a corrupt, evil judgment. This is a wrong judgment. In fact, I saw a report where one of the senators of Georgia is now going to impeach the judge that indicted and released it, released an arrest warrant or an arrest for President Trump. So many, many to kill a person. Isn't that interesting? So judgment, a verdict a condemnation, a case at law, a decision is coming. And in midst of the shakings, in midst of the fires, I see the Pakistani friends that are, are commenting here, in midst of the church being shaken in Pakistan, in midst of the persecution against Christians, there is right now judgment coming. God is about to release a verdict. God is about to release the condemnation or the case at law. God is about to deal with your haters, all right? So I want to say krima one more time. Krima, judgment, to distinguish and to judge and to decide. So right now we are hanging in the balance and decisions, judgments, justices are being made. And judgment is actually a great thing for the believer. 
It's a great thing. I don't know about you, but God, deal with anything that's not good in my life. Pluck it out. Pull it out. Hallelujah. Judgment for the believer is justice and righteousness. But for the unbeliever, it is consequence. It is shaking. It is difficulty. Because what judgment is, is God is bringing things back into order and into correction. That's what the Lord's doing. So judgment is beginning first in the house of God. So I want to talk to you about five things right now, I believe pertaining to this word of judgment. All right, someone said, I want you to comment judgment because judgment is coming and so is justice. Judgment is coming and so is justice. All right, so I saw a great falling away. Great falling away, falling away from the faith falling away from first love, falling away from biblical literacy, sound doctrine. The Bible says in the end times, there will be lovers of their flesh, a falling away from holiness. And there's judgment coming, judgment in the house of God. All right, so listen, uh, five things. Number one, I believe number one in the next two months, there's going to be exposure and falling away. Number one. Exposure of what? I believe certain ministers are going to be exposed. It's going to be shutting down of certain ministries and churches. Even in the next month, as we are getting closer to Rosh Hashanah, the new Hebrew year, a lot of these people are not going to get, are not going to cross over. So I believe there's going to be exposure of deeds done in the darkness, exposure of sin, uh, fraud, corruption of money. So there's going to be exposure on a falling away. So number one, in the next month, because judgment belongs first in the house of God, I believe we're going to see exposure and a falling away. Ministers and ministries, churches. Number two, I believe in the next month, there's going to be Judases that will be exposed. Literally, the Judas in your camp is preparing to turn you in and to turn you aside. The Judas in the camp is maliciously preparing underground, under the table, to sell you for 30 shekels. So in this month, Judases are gonna be exposed. And I believe, of course, as I talked about, a time of pruning and preparation and a time of getting ready, amen. As the Judases are being exposed, there's going to be pretty much Jezebels because Judas is a Jezebel spirit that comes near, that comes close to try to usurp your authority, to try to steal your seat. That's what Jesse Wezzy Bezzy did with Ahab, right? And of course, Joe Biden is a modern day Ahab, right? And the Jezebel spirit isn't even Camilla. The Jezebel spirit really is probably Obama. Someone say amen. So as we see, and it's probably Michael, I mean, Michelle Obama, but as we see, there is a exposure of Judases in the next month that's going to happen. And whenever there's weak leadership, Judas will come in and infiltrate and get involved. So Judas is a Jezebel. Number three, I believe in the next month, we are going to see even more separation of the wheat and the tares. We already know there is the church of Babylon. There is a church that has been Babylonized. I don't even know if that's a word, Babylonized, uh, Romanized, how about that? There's a church that's been Romanized. There's a church that's in bed with the whore of Babylon. We already know that there is a church today that has sold their soul for to the enemy that has been in bed with Jezebel. We already know that <clears throat> these Christians, these so-called believers, are ordaining transgender ministers. They're ordaining homosexual ministers. These denominations, the Lutherans, uh, the Baptists, I don't know about the Baptists, but the Methodists, the Anglicans, they are ordaining transgender ministers. That is an affront and an apostate in Jesus' name. But I believe even in the next month, we're going to see the worldly church the lukewarm church that is in bed with the world, with Jezebel. We're going to see even more separation 
from the carnal church with the spirit-filled church. And, and you know what? I praise God that the Lord has, in a sense, kept our church ministry, in a sense, smaller. Do you know why? Because, uh, because you know, the more people there are, then the more nonsense will try to creep in. And I believe in these end times, again, it's going to be the house church movement. It's going to be the house churches. Yeah, we're going to preach on all different platforms and all different angles. But as it was in the days of the book of Acts, they went from house to house. And I've said this many years, even as a young man, young minister, the persecution in America will be so great that we're going to have to go underground like the Chinese church. We're going to have to go underground like the Wuhan virus, just kidding. We're going to have to go underground and go from house to house. Hallelujah. So those days are coming, but there's going to be a separation, greater separation of the wheat and the tares, the sheep and the goat, the church of the world versus the spirit filled church. I don't even know how people can go to Walmart. I mean, I don't even know how people go to Walmart firstly. Now, I don't know how you could even pump gas at the petrol station without praying in tongues. Like, you need to be girded up, guided, guarded in the Holy Ghost. You need to be equipped. Someone say, I'm packing. You need to be packing that, that thing. You know, you need to be packing that pistola. You need to be packing that fire. But a separation of the lukewarm church. Number four, I saw in terms of judgment, coming first to the house of God. Number four, I saw the spirit of offense taking out many. Now, Jesus instructed his cousin named John the Baptist, do not be offended at me. Don't be offended at me. Even John the Baptist, the great prophet, even John the Baptist, the cousin of Jesus, John the Baptist, who leapt in the belly of his mother as he heard the sound of the mother of the Messiah's voice. Come on, somebody. Even John the Baptist was offended at Jesus. But I saw the spirit of offense overtaking the church. Really, it's a spirit of deception and it's a spirit of offense. But I saw the spirit of offense and John Bevere, incredible book, The Bait of Satan. How offense is the bait of Satan. You're offended because you're wounded. You're offended because you're immature. You're offended because you're carnal. Do you like how I'm doing that? You're offended because you don't got the Holy Ghost. You're offended because you're always just a nonsense Karen. You're offended because you're always, you know, complaining and on your, your pity party, on your portal party, and you're always shaka baba. All right. So I saw the spirit of offense being released. And literally, the Lord is testing us. Will you be shaken? Will you be offended? Will you react as they react? Will you turn the other cheek? Will you respond in love? Will you respond in wisdom? Will you respond with grace and kindness? Amen. And, you know, too many of us, we want the skinny jeans Jesus. We want the tolerant Jesus. We want the soy boy latte Jesus. We want the, no, no, buddy, buddy, camote, calm down. Camote, siéntate tranqui, mijo, tranqui, mijo, okay? We want this version of Jesus, all right? That's called the LIV. What's the LIV? The liberal international version. No, Jesus is not part of the LIV. Jesus was not a socialist. Jesus was not a communist. He was not a hippie boy, amen? Come on, somebody. He actually worked for many years. Come on, somebody. All right. As a carpenter. Santa de Dios. <laughs> but the spirit of offense. Like my Jesus is not a manzy pansy. My Jesus is a king. He's a warrior. He's a, he, he's, he is the, my Jesus is about to overturn some tables. I prophesy. The overturning of tables to come forth right now. Many, many to kill a parson. Get ready for the tables to be overturned. And isn't it interesting? Jesus is a table setter, but he's also a table flipper. As a carpenter, 
as you probably saw in Chosen or the Passion of Christ. Jesus made tables, but he also destroyed evil, corrupt, unjust tables because my father's house will be called a house of prayer. But you have turned it into a den of robbers. You have made it difficult for them to receive the grace of God. And you have put even more burdens, religious burdens of nonsense on their shoulders. In Jesus' name. So much hallelujah. So I believe Jesus is about to turn some tables. He's about to flip some tables. Amen. And when he does, get ready for the ratons and the cucarachas. To, yeah, to, exactly, just like that. All right, so number four, the spirit of offense. I saw the spirit of offense running rampant across the earth. And now number five, number five. I believe as judgment begins first in house, number one, there's exposure and falling away of ministers, ministries, and churches. Number two, Judas's and Jezebel's will be exposed. Number three, separation of the wheat and the tares, sheep and the goats, the spirit-filled church, the new breed versus the old guard versus the religious spirit, the religious church of Babylon. Number four, there will be a spirit of offense that will take out many. My goodness, spirit of offense that will take out many. And then number five, the fifth thing that I believe is going to happen even as there's judgment in the house of God. Number five, there's going to be indictments. There's going to be lawsuits. Now, hear me now. All right. I believe, I believe, and I know some, some people, I've gone some slack and flack for this. But I believe Brian Houston, the former senior pastor, founder of Hillsong. I don't know if he was the founder, but Brian Houston was the verdict was literally what? One week ago, two weeks ago, the verdict by the judge was ruled not guilty, not guilty. All right. Not guilty. Now, I know some people believe that, again, the court system is unjust. The court system, you know, gave him a free pass. How much How much money did Brian Houston give to the court, to the judge? How many of his connections or how many uh, of the oligarchs or, you know, uh, connections on top of the fat cats and the fat pockets did he have in connection? And so, you know, I, I've, I've read, you know, some of the people respond, but I believe even as the judge released the open public verdict in the courts of earth, all right, that he is not guilty. He's not guilty, Brian Houston. Now, isn't this interesting? Because we have a weaponized justice system in America. And we have corrupt judges everywhere. We have corrupt politicians everywhere. We have corrupt people. Corruption is just part of the fallen world. So here yesterday, which was August 24th, Thursday, you see the judge indicting and arresting President Trump, all right? We already know that's full heresy, full, it's full, it's faulty, it's heresy, it's an affront, it's false, falsivity, it's evil, right? And then on the other side, you see someone like Brian Houston, a man of God, a pastor who's given his life to serve the Lord, all right? Is he perfect? No, all right? Uh, amen. Is he perfect? No, absolutely not. I'm not. You're not. All right. But you see on the other side in Australia where the judge deems Brian Houston as not guilty. I believe in the next month, we're going to see some indictments, some arrests. We're going to see judgments in the courts. We are going to see justice, judgment, vindication, verdicts, indictments, and arrests, even in the church in the next month. Someone say, preach, Dr. Ben. Even in the next month, I prophesy there's going to be some ministers going to jail. There's going to be some churches going to jail for fraud, embezzlement, for abuse, sexual abuse. There's going to be some indictments and court arrests. That's going to happen in the next month. So that's point number five. 
court indictments, judgments, and verdicts in the courts of heaven in the next month. And I also believe many will also be acquitted. Many will also be acquitted. Many will also be vindicated. Many will experience the defender called Jesus Christ. Are you with me today? I want you to give us some hearts and likes right now. Come on, let's build up the room. I believe in the same measure, there's going to be some indictments and arrests, even in the church world in the next month. I also believe on the contrary, there's going to be acquittals and releases, vindications, and there's going to be public honor, public exoneration. Come on, somebody. Public exoneration. That is going to happen even in the next month. God is going to silence the false prophets. God is going to silence the predator prophets. God is going to silence the prophets that all they do is profit off of God's people and off of the sheep. God is going to do a work in the courts of heaven. And judgment begins first in the house of God. Judgment begins first in the house of God. Come on, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost out loud. Come on, pray. Thank you, Lord. Rebe se tarabata. Sharabababasa. Hey, sharabasa tarabata. Thank you, Lord. Right now, we, Jesus, we release the blood of Jesus, a force field of glory. We draw a line of blood. Shatara, <clears throat> as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I declare everything that is in my possession is protected under the sovereignty of God. Masatara, but listen, in the next month, it's going to be great shaking, great exposure, great falling away, deception, offense. Judgment begins first in the house of God. But it is a cleansing, it is a purifying, it is a shaking. And it is the just doing of God. Not all who call me Lord, Lord. Did we not cast out devils in your name? Did we not work miracles in your name? Lord, not all who say to me, Lord, Lord, will be saved. I'll say, I never knew you. I never knew you. Glory to God. Come on, continue to pray in the spirit. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Release the plumb line. Release the plumb line, O oh God. Uproot. I see angels of justice being released. Jesus. Jesus. And an overturning and a boomerang. Every attack and slight. Every accusations, allegations, every arrow and dart that's been thrown at you and against you will be returned and overturned and will boomerang in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Shakarebe Siterabata. The plumb line is in the hand of God. It's time to draw a line in the sand. Come out from those unclean things. Separate yourselves. Hear the word of the Lord. Separate yourself. Separate yourself. As you separate yourself in the next month, you're going to be promoted. Separation is promotion. Remember that. Consecration is promotion. Separation is promotion. So separate yourself even in the next month. And watch how the Lord elevates you and promotes you and blesses you in Jesus' name. I want you to say amen. Continue to pray in the Holy Ghost. I hear the Lord saying, I am your hiding place. You are my hiding place. You always fill my life with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am 
afraid. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the presence of the Lord. I will trust in you. Hey, I will trust in you. Oh, and let the weak say I am strong in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. I declare Psalm 91 over you. Glory. Ooh, I'm getting hit with the Holy Ghost. I declare Psalm 91 over you. Listen, I want to prophesy right now. Jesus. There's a restoration coming to you. Even as God is exposing. Even as God is exposing to beginning to expose the Judases and Jezebels. Jesus. He's also going to cause people to repent and to return. Like I see a returning of some people who left. Your enemies, oh, I feel the Lord. Some of your greatest enemies in the last season will actually become your biggest supporters, sponsors, funders, donors, and promoters. Every enemy promotes you. And I saw a returning, not just a return of first love, but I saw a returning, hallelujah, of people from your past life. Do you know what I'm talking about? Are you receiving this? A returning of people, even as Judas's and Jezzy's are leaving and being exposed. There's going to be a restoration like there was with Apostle Paul and, and Apostle Barnabas. A restoration. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Second uh, Timothy four eleven. Thank you, Lord. Second Timothy four eleven. Here is Apostle Paul. Amen. Writing to his spiritual son Timothy. Yeah, 2 Timothy 4.11. Apostle Paul is writing to his spiritual son, Timothy. And he's saying, Luke alone is with me, but go and get Mark and bring him for he's useful. You see, because Paul and Mark had a separation. But at the latter part of Paul's life, Paul is saying, bring me my friend and my brother. Get ready for restoration. Get ready for healing waves. Healing moments. Get ready for a return of the glory of God. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It's, it's really hot over here. <laughs> I like the studio, but we need to work on the air conditioner here in the studio because it's a sauna up in here, let me tell you. Especially when I start preaching. And literally above me is like, kind of like a open heavens roof window, a ceiling window, because we're here in a warehouse. <laughs> so fire of God. Thank you, Lord. Let's just stay in the presence a little bit more. Just abide in him. The prophet is not done. The Lord is not done yet. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, just lift up your hands. Father, I thank you. Bless your people today. I thank you that in times of shaking, you are raising up an unshakable church. 
You are raising up an unshakable body, a group of believers, men and women of God, who will not be shaken, for we are receiving the unshakable kingdom. Zion. Great judgment's coming, a great falling is coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, if you received this word today, I want to say amen. Give us some hearts and likes. Please do consider sharing. And uh, give this page a like and a follow. Listen, I'm on threads now. We're working to get me back up on Twitter. For whatever reason, I cannot access my login. Uh, Twitter X. But follow me on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. And on threads. Praise God. And even Twitter X. Well, friends, consider subscribing. And by the way, to all my subscribers, I believe I saw a number of our subscribers here on Facebook. Facebook subscription is kind of like a monthly partnership through uh, the Meta Facebook platform. So um, if you sign up as a subscriber next Wednesday, and you'll, you'll see it in the Facebook events, but next Wednesday for our subscribers, I'm going to take time to personally pray over all of our subscribers. If you are a Facebook subscriber, can you just comment, I am, so I could see you. But I know, I think I saw a number of our Facebook subscribers here. But do consider becoming a Facebook uh, subscriber or being a monthly partner with our ministry. Amen. You can do that by going to BenlamGlobal.com. Well, God bless you, friends. Shabbat Shalom. Happy Friday. Amen. If this word blessed you, encouraged you, bore witness with your spirit, I want you to share this on your wall. Amen. Thank you, Bridger Rivers, Rob, Shakrita, Anna, Hanin, DC. Awesome. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Gloria Barron. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. All right, friends, bless you. Shabbat shalom, love you. Gloria, people, thank you. Pilpa.